well, that definitely took a long, long while. Well then, season two, start! Yes! Okay, so now let's take a look. So in commemoration for the first episode of season two, the special ingredient that we have today is this. Here we go! This is called a pink ling fillet. Well, let's create something out of this. Alright everybody, the special ingredient that we have today is this pink ling fillet. This fish is normally caught in around New Zealand and Australian waters. Well, you can say it's kind of like a really nice sweet fish which is actually commercially fished in most of everywhere in the southern seas. This fish actually lives in between like 20 meters to 1 kilometers below sea level and its primary diet consists of small shrimps, small fish and most likely hockey. Actually, you through this in the Malaysian market, you don't usually find pink link fillets in Malaysia. Why? Because in Australian fisheries and New Zealand fisheries, they usually cut the head out and well, they don't really know what to do with it. And they take the head out to export it to places like Malaysia. And what does Malaysia actually do with it? They use it to make things like curry fish head or maybe fish head noodles. And this thing here, the link fillet is actually quite expensive. Well, for some sort of reason, I actually got my hands on it and because due to the price, it's very hard to see somebody importing pink ling fillet. Well then, now let's take a look at the fish, shall we? That's what I forgot to mention just now. The ling fillet is actually not really a fish. It's actually like an eel-type kind of fish. As far as we're supposed to know, there's not supposed to have any scales on the fish at all. Based on the research that I actually done on the pink ling fillet, the fish is supposed to have like this pinkish orange color. But I guess this is maybe an old stock. But I guess the meat is going to be just not bad. So, let's see what's on the back. Well, the fish actually looks like a typical lean meat. I don't feel any pin bones at all going out from here and there is no belly bones. After all, this is actually a eel type fish. Well, there's actually a small amount of bones right here. Well, it's just really a tiny amount and we can actually remove it later on. So what am I going to do with this fish? I'm going to make something really, really, really simple. It is said that the ling fish actually has this really nice sweet fishy flavor on it. And the fish is actually pretty much versatile. People can serve it as fried, pan fried, oven baked, steamed, whatever. What comes in my mind for this is that I really actually have an appetite for raw fish porridge. It's basically porridge but you actually take thinly sliced raw fish and put it inside the porridge. Well, let's get this started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to slice the fish. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do based on what I actually saw just now, there's actually this small amount of bones which I can easily remove just like this. There. And maybe I'll use approximately around this much today. You can actually see that there's quite a nice amount of fiber around it. The fish is a little bit, well, soggy. You can actually squeeze, you can see some water coming out from it. Oh well, here I go. Next part, I'm gonna slice here. So I'm just gonna remove this for fun. And then this part here, just gonna make some thin slices out of it. So this is what a sliced fish looks like. Well, for the belly part, hmm, let's see. Maybe I'll just slice it like this. Make it a little bit longer. Hmm, the belly part is a little bit rough actually. much a lot of sliced fish for one portion of porridge but hey slicing is done all right sliced fish done so this i'm going to put this in the fridge to save it for later now we're going to start by making our porridge but the thing is i'm I'm not going to make a normal porridge with just water and rice. I'm going to substitute the water with some tare stock. Well, regardless, the first thing we have to do with the rice is to actually wash the rice. 
I actually have some corn boost stock right here, which I actually soaked in water like overnight. So what we're going to do now, we're going to heat this up, but we don't boil it. You can see that the stock is actually heating up already, but it's actually not ready. Now that you can actually see quite a number of bubbles come out, I'm just going to remove the corn boost. Okay, kombu removed. Well, right now I'm putting in a certain amount of bonito flakes. Maybe around this much to do. So right now, while the porridge is actually being cooked in the rice cooker, I'm going to start making my garnish. So the garnish that I've actually decided to make is actually going to be based on three different types of eggs. This is actually called a century eggs. This is a salted egg and this is, well, plain normal chicken eggs. I guess the first thing that we are actually going to cook right now is the salted eggs because this thing inside is actually like raw. And this one, you can actually uh, just open it and use it straight away. Let's start by cleaning this thing up and boiling the eggs. Here we go. There you go, nice eggs. Well, into the boiler for about, let's say, 10 minutes, that should do. And this is actually the salted egg after it's boiled. Here we go, let's peel this thing up. This is what salted egg is like. I'm just gonna cut this into four. So, ooh, the nice color. This is what you call salted egg. Next, the century eggs. You also have to wash off the cure from this. So here I go. Duck century eggs. This is what it looks like in the inside. So now, the only thing I need to do with the century egg is to just peel it off. That's all. This is what century eggs actually is. Really, really nice, light, and it actually has a really nice creamy flavor. I'm just going to slice one century eggs and let you see what exactly is it like in the inside. So here I go. You can see that's really mushy and creamy. Wow. One eggs, I'm gonna slice it to around like four. Yep. So yeah. The century eggs itself is really, really appetizing. For some extra garnishing, I'm going to have four things actually. I'm going to start with slicing the spring onions. Here we go, done. Coriander leaves, I'm not going to use the roots. And for the ginger, I guess I'll be needing only around like this much. done. Time to scoop it up. Here we go. Porridge rice goes in. So right now I pretty much poured the porridge into a clay pot. I'm going to re-boil again but this time I'm adding a small amount of sesame oil. Just a really small amount of sesame oil. A small amount of ponzu. And I'm adding in white pepper. Now the garnish with some ginger. This is roasted garlic. Spring onion and coriander leaf. Last but not least, salted egg and century eggs. And now we can just close this and let the magic begin. Alright, job well done. Well, I have to say that this dish actually looks really really appetizing for a really simple and cheap dish. First thing you're gonna have to do is to complete the dish. So, crack it in. Cracking the eggs in. And some raw fish. I'm just going to randomly put the fish inside here like this, yes. 
think this should be enough and then I'll be mixing the porridge this will take a while well I kind of make the porridge a little bit too thick though but I actually choose this if you ask me I like it that way well then raw fish porridge is just pretty much done so here we go I'm gonna pour some of the raw fish porridge here Ooh, looks good I'm gonna put this aside the moment of truth let's see what this porridge actually tastes like to be honest this porridge is gonna end up becoming like a mixture of shabu shabu and porridge so let's see you can see that the link here it's already cooked because it's sliced really really thinly you don't even need the porridge to be like super hot for it to be cooked but of course you need it to be hot so let's see what it tastes like hmm it's not what i really expect from anything i feel that the link is a little bit kind of gummy it feels kind of like has this distinctive fishy flavor on it thank god i put some ginger in it it's not bad I won't say it's good either. There are other kinds of fish which actually taste better than this. Like Hollywood and Soul Fish, I guess. I can say that the tare that I put inside the porridge didn't really give that much flavor. There is this distinctive flavor, but it's not a lot. Here's what, century egg time. Let's try one slice of century egg with some ling. Mm. Sometimes if you ask me, I really like to compare century eggs with meat and it has this like uh, earthy minty flavor on it and it goes really well with the porridge okay now time to eat this with salted egg and see what it tastes like mmm salted egg goes really well with this overall i can say that this is pretty much an average style porridge actually well actually the truth is i don't think i can finish all of this by myself i'm gonna save this for tomorrow's meal or something like that so yeah well then, I'm gonna end my review now while I finish this meal. I'm done eating. Well then, on today's episode, we actually had ling fillet. What we did is we actually turned it into a raw fish porridge, but honestly speaking, due to how thick the porridge is, well, it's not really a porridge anymore. It's kind of like a conky texture. Well, it's kind of different because porridge is supposed to be like light and watery and compi is supposed to be thick. How about my comments on the fish? Well, personally, I think that fish is kind of okay. It tastes like a typical fish. Well, I guess my expectation is a little bit too high because this is a eel, not a fish. I think that this fish, you can actually use it to make like a very good pan fried fish. Well then, that's all I can say about the fish. Like, comment and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.